back from lunch and I think you have enjoyed yourselves. Uh, this training is to help us learn the basic skills in the first aspect of in infection prevention. Uh, in most settings, this is the initial step where we need to prevent infection and spread to our patients and also to ourselves and to our colleagues. So this is a very big aspect. And the first thing we are going to learn today is the practical aspect of performing correctly and washing. I, as I told you before, we are going to uh, have the hand washing uh, uh, demonstration in steps. The first thing is, if you have a watch or rings on your fingers or even bracelets that you have, make sure you remove them before you start doing the hand washing. So I'm going to remove mine, okay? I know some of you may be having those also. So I remove my watch in an attempt. And if I, if I have a ring, I should remove it to prevent the infection. So first thing is you remove all those items if you have them. Now the second thing is that you should do is that you go and make sure that you wet your hands with water. Okay? You wet your hands with water up to the level of the risk. Just allow me to remove this uh, coat because when you are going to do hand washing for routine, because the indication is that you are going to examine patients. So. The ideal is that you are supposed to wash your hand before examining a patient or before you go to examine the next patient. So on subsequent examination, you're supposed to wash your hands. So it is good to make sure that you, re, you, uh, you fold your sleeves if you have a long sleeve for easy so they don't wet your, uh, your sleeves. So what we are going to do, I'm folding mine. I've removed my coat because I cannot fold it. And because of routine hand washing, we are going to just expose up to the risk as far as possible. But when we are going for surgery, we're going to use these scrubs that some of you are wearing. And then we have to make sure we expose up to the elbow <coughs> for scrubbing, okay? So, the first thing is you go and wet your hands under a clean running water. And we are going to use that tap to make sure we, we do that. And uh, so, after wetting your hands up to the, the risk, okay? After wetting your hands completely, apply it the shop. We have a, a liquid shop there that we are going to use today. We apply it on our hands after the risk, okay? Because there's a difference between hand washing and hand scrubbing. Because for scrubbing up to the elbow level, because you are preparing for surgery. So in this case, you wet it with water and then you apply the shop. After applying the shop, you go to scrubbing. And these are the steps that have, you have there in front of you. The step in scrubbing of hands. You start by scrubbing both hands, the palm of the hands. Yes? Start by scrubbing. And this is scrubbing palm to palm. Okay? Then you scrub each fingers in between the fingers after scrubbing palm to palm. Now, the best approach that is easy to follow is to count. Make a count of five. Okay? As you are scrubbing, make a, a count of five. One, two, three, four, five. And then as you proceed to each, you also make a count of five. At each time you are doing the scrubbing. So this time in between the fingers, you count one, two, three, four, five. Then the next one behind your fingers on each hand. One, two, three, four, five. Also, the opposite side. One, two, three, four, five. Then you go to your thumb. One, two, three, four, five. Also, the opposite part of the thumb. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the next thing is to rub the fingers together. One, two, three, four, five. Of course, you will be counting in your, in your minds. You're not going to be counting. Not everyone will be counting while they're, what? they're doing their hand washing or scrubbing. Okay? You'll be counting on your own. You're not going to be telling people one, two, <laughs> three. You're going to be making a lot of noise. Okay? Then you continue. The tip of your fingers. One, two, three, four, 
five. And the opposite side, one, two, three, four, five. For routine hand washing, you stop at the risk. One, two, three, four, five. And the opposite side, one, two, three, four, five. Now, this is routine hand washing. You can dry it with a clean towel eh, or a paper towel, or you can freely air dry. You understand that? Then your hands is ready to go and examine the patient. Yes? And then when, after examining the patient, you are going to go again and do hand washing. Now, this routine hand washing should at least take a minute. Uh, in other literatures, they can tell you between 30 seconds to one minute, but at least the maximum, at least it should take one minute, okay? Now, we can also have the same idea when we are doing the hand scrubbing, okay? The hand scrubbing, normally, we do scrubbing because we want to go and perform an operation. And that's the main idea of doing hand scrubbing. With hand scrubbing, you have to expose beyond the level of your elbow. That's why you use a scrub, okay? So now I'm going to extend this so that I can show you up to the level of your elbow. At all cases, whether you're doing hand washing or hand scrubbing, make sure, make sure that you keep your hands above the level of your waist after the hand washing has occurred. Are you getting me? Because you don't want to take it so low that you cannot control you getting your hands again dirty. So I've just folded this so that I can expose the elbow, but you're going to be using the scrub, not like mine here. Okay, so this, the hand scrubbing, still you do the same thing. You wet your hands, just the same steps as you have done your hand washing. <laughs> but in this case, you have to wet your hands after the level of the elbow. Are you understanding? On both sides. Wet your hands up to the level of your elbow and then apply the shop. Make sure the shop goes up to the level of your elbow. Yes? Then after applying the shop, you go to the scrubbing process. The scrubbing process for hand scrubbing and hand washing is similar. The difference is that for scrubbing, you go up to the level of your what? Your elbow. You don't stop at the risk. You understand? You don't stop at the risk. So you start the same way, palm to palm. Okay? You do it palm to palm. Then between your fingers, now I'm not counting one, two, three, up to five, because I've done that, okay? But still you'll be counting, because for scrubbing at least expected to spend about five minutes. Yes? Don't just take only one minute and then most likely you have not finished all this. Yes. So you go through between your fingers, then you go to the thumb on both sides, but I believe you have observed when I was performing the hand washing. Same way, you continue, and then behind your, your hands on both sides, yes? Then you come to interlocking the, the fingers, then you come to the tip of your fingers, counting one, two, three, up to five, like the way we did for hand washing. You understand? But this time, you are going to the risk. The risk, you extend up to the elbow. Are you getting me? Are you seeing how I'm moving it? up to down, it should always go, keep going down, as you scrubbing it. Are you getting me? Now, in most cases, you are going to have the scrubbing brush. If you have the scrubbing brush, it wouldn't disturb you because you're not going to be using your bare hands. But in our setting, most time you don't have even the scrubbing brush where everything you use the brush, okay? Every time, all the steps you use the brush. But in this case, you're going to use most time your hands because we don't have the scrubbing brush. So you have to extend up to your elbow. Now, the moment you are finished with scrubbing, you are going to go and do gowning. Okay? We are going to continue until we finish it. Eh? We are going to do gowning. You already have your gown already uh, put on eh, a trolley, which is sterile. And even your gown is what? Sterile. So you're going to pick your gown. And if the gown is tight, then you have to release the, the string that has tied it. Okay? Then, you are going to look and see which side is more uniform. You realize that this part is not uniform, this part is more uniform. So you can hold it and you, some of the gowns, like this one here, has a collar-like arrangement. Others just has a string attached to it. So it can help you to identify which one is the upper part and which one is the downer part. Okay? In good folding, the downer part is hidden inside. So you cannot be able to what? 
to, to see that the downer part which should be leading down. But this upper part is always exposed for you to see. So you can hold it this way and let it go down like that and face away from you. That's why I expect you to hold the other side which is more uniform. Identify if the string is there, you're already going to be holding with the string. But if the string is not there like this one, it's a collar, collar like, then you get the collar part of it. Now you open it while it is facing away from you. Yes? So the inside part of the gown is towards you, then the outside part which is going to be exposed is away from you. So you're going to open it. You're seeing this? After opening, while holding the collar part, you will see where the hands is supposed to go through. These two holes you see here. Your hands will go through, so you're going to put one of the hands inside, like this, and then this other hand is going to go inside like that. Now, after putting, someone will, of course, be able to tie uh, from the back, if you have somebody. But even if you don't have somebody, like in most cases, you can even be alone, then you just have to keep it fit. You have to make sure you have to keep it fit. But most cases, you have somebody tied from your back. So when someone has clipped or tied from your back, or button from the back, for those who that have the buttons like this one, then you already expose your fingers, okay? I would like someone to open for me one of that glove so that it can be continuous. And you see how we're going to put it. Even opening the glove, that's how you're supposed to open the glove. In most cases, you find these things already there on the trolley, okay? This is for demonstration. <laughs> yes, just open. Okay, this is for them. I'll show you how to open the gloves, but... <laughs> Yes, most times the gloves are already open. You find them on the trolley as well. So when you have the glove already there on the trolley, you're going to open the inner part of the gloves. Even if someone opened for you, you pick the inner part because your hands has been what? Has been washed and is clean. So this is your finger. Now, how do you pick the gloves? Normally, it is important to use the less dominant first because the dominant one, you're going to use it for the other one. It's easier for me. Uh, it depends if you are left-handed or right-handed. So now you pick the cuff of the glove. This is part of the cuff. The, the folded part of the glove is the cuff of the, of the glove. Are you getting me? I hope you are seeing. So you pick it up. But make sure that the other opposite hand is not going to touch the other one. It's not going to touch. So I'm going to put it inside. While you have to see that this short end of the finger-like part of the glove is supposed to go to the thumb. Because if you don't see it, then you are going to start struggling. Where is the thumb going to enter? Where are the other fingers are going to enter? Then you pick it and make sure this one enters inside, like this. You see, I'm stretching it away so that I don't touch anything here. Because this hand is not what? It's not sterile, but it's clean because I've scrubbed it. So then you leave it at that. Then you go ahead and pick the other part of the glove. This time, you can put your hands to enter inside of the calf of the blue because this is sterile. So you can actually touch this this other part, you're seeing? Then now you bring your other hands. Well, you have already observed that this small thing, the small pointer is going to the thumb. And that's what you're going to have. You understanding? Okay, then you put your fingers inside, like this. You're seeing, eh? I have not yet released, so I want to organize it better. Then I can release it. Now you can adjust. When you're adjusting, because you see this is not fully uh, fixed, so you, can, you have to pick it don't start looking for it from down here because you're going to go inside which is not probably sterile because you touch it with your what? You have clean hands that are not sterile. You're getting me? So you are supposed to just pick it. Pick this part if you want to adjust. Pick this other part which is sterile and move your hands inside. Are you seeing? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Then you can now freely adjust. Your hands is inside, not to the outside part which you touched before of the cuff. So you can actually freely adjust it. Now you can keep adjusting. Make sure that the whole of this other part of the glove has entered inside. So you can adjust it so that you are comfortable the way you want. And now this is how you put on the gloves. You can now keep adjusting it so that it can fit properly. We are together? Okay. You are going to put on the second glove for when you are going to do surgery. Yes? You are going to put on the second glove. When you put on the second glove, you want to open? Okay, fine. If you open, I put on the second glove. And then it makes it complete for us. <laughs> Go through. Then you can freely adjust. If it is not fix, fixing well. If it's not fitting well, you adjust. Then you can fix inside. You can also do pick and adjust. 
Now, you have finished your surgery, you want to unglove, even ungown, because that's where the challenge will also come in. Most times, you just that yourself, you remove the outer gloves. Remove the outer glove, and remove the outer glove, the outer one only. Now, you don't remove the inner one. This one, now someone will help me and release the gown from the back or the string in this case. Okay? So, when you are removing, of course, uh, this is not a COVID patient. For COVID, is a little bit different. So, you remove your gown. Are you seeing? Now, this gown is put somewhere, not of course on the table. Now, when you are removing these other gloves, you also just pick, always pick the glove when you want to remove. Don't try to do like this because these hands may not be completely what? Clean, even all sterile because you have just had surgery. So you get me? So you pick like this and you release. Are you seeing? I've not removed it completely. Then I pick this one also. Now this is the inside part of the gloves. Eh? And now you pick this other, other one also. You, then you do like this. Realize that now I'm all on the inside. Then you can easily remove. remove because it is from inside. So I've not touched the outside of the glove. You're getting me very well? So I think this is a very good episode for you to learn. Thank you very much. Uh, we can go ahead and perform this similar thing that we have done. And all of you, I expect you to start with unwashing there. And then we go ahead and do the scrubbing. Then after that, we are going to do the gowning here and gloving as well. And then un ungloving and ungowning as well. Thank you. Yes, any question? Yeah, I have a question on that. She gloved in the second pair. Yes. I have normally seen the second pair is put on after maybe a sepsis. You use the first pair. You, you do a sepsis on the patient. Then yes. You now put on the, the second pair. I don't know what to say about that. Well, uh, <coughs> it depends on the, the nature of operation you are going to do. We have elective surgeries, and then we have emergency surgeries, okay? So normally what we normally prefer, if you have going to do elective, you have the leisure to do the right thing, and all the time you can always be protecting yourself and the patients. Now what we do, uh, of course people practice things differently. They want you to put on both gloves and then go and, and prepare the skin for surgery, not so? And even drape the patient. Now. It is, better, it is better practice. If you put on one glove, you go and clean the skin of the patient. Drape the patient. As you are signing in, you know what signing in is? Signing in is to, uh, to start cutting, start putting a knife on the skin. Okay? Before you start cutting the patient, you put on the second uh, pair of gloves. And now, pick the, 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 the surgical blade and start the procedure. That is ideal in, in cases where we have elective. But when we have emergencies, everyone is running around. So it is difficult for you to first put on one glove, prepare the skin, drape the patient, go and put on the second gloves, and now start cutting the patient. It may be difficult. That's why some people put it at once, so they don't forget. Because at least you should use two pairs of gloves than just using one. You know these gloves, some, some of them are porous. They can have some pores in it. So if you have two, it is better protective than just having one. Okay? Yes. 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 Do it. Do it as you talk. And then you wet your hand up to the elbow. Yes. Inside also. Up to the elbow. Mm -hmm. And then you apply soap. Mm -hmm. Some places have sensors, eh? so you're not going to touch anything, like in our theater here. You will not find in other theaters anyway. Yes. Apply. Apply the shop up to the elbow as well. Yes. Up to the elbow. Yes. Yes. Very good. You can count one and then you continue the rest. Uh-huh. 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 Yes. And then you go between the fingers. Uh-huh. Also, one to five. Uh-huh. 
Uh huh. And then we go to the back of the thumb. Back of the hands for the thumb. And then we go to the back of the hands. <laughs> Uh huh. The knuckles. Uh huh. The next one is. Yes, the tip of the fingers. <laughs> tip of the fingers on both sides. Then the next one. The risk up, the, up, to, yes, yes, on both sides, up to the elbow. You reach the elbow very well. No more, not, no, not now there. The risk is here. It starts here and goes down. <laughs> you see, the tap, our tap system is not very good. It's low, eh? Yeah, but so you have to... You're supposed to make sure that you put it and your hands are facing up like that. And the water should be flowing and gets off from the elbow point, just like that. So I think he has demonstrated it now. It, what's remaining is to clean the hands using what? A clean towel, paper towel, or just do air drying.